Hi there learners and welcome to today's video where we will be continuing on our section of asking questions that will guide your investigation. This is still phase one. Um, this is the grade 12 pet but for the grade 10s and 11s it's a good idea to follow along so you can get a good idea of what is going to be expected of you in your particular pet. So we've already dealt with this front section over here where we looked at the questions, the question level, the category, and the type of source. Now remember for the 10s and 11s, this is what it's going to look like. It will be under the heading research questions. It is part of your document under or on the next page after your focus question. For the grade 12s, remember it's going to be under appendices. This entire table is going to be like that under appendices under its own heading. All right, so now we can see with the grade 10s and 11s, after we've created those three tables, um, we need to then have source tables. Okay, and you can see we should have, that's two. Okay, that's two. It should actually be three source tables. The 10s and 11s, I think with the 10s, it's two and the 11s, it's three, but we'll see what the PAT document has to say. So let's see what's required for the grade 12s. We know we've done that section. So now we're looking at identifying um, the, the sources. So remember in the previous video, we looked up to the type of source, right? We put all of that in. Now we need to actually go and chat a bit more about the sources. And you can see in the grade 10 and 11 section, um, you'd actually have tables that end up looking like this, where you are going to put the author, organization or publisher, um, in this case, it was Smart Social, the name of the website or the web page or the book, um, the date it was created. Now, some websites won't have the date they were created. So you just put N slash A for not applicable. The date access, in other words, the date you visited that website. And then the URL, you can see the whole long link to the actual website. Okay. Here's another one with a different source. This was the author. This is the title, the date the book was published and the publisher. So please just see the difference. If you are using a book or magazine, this is what it must look like. Um, if it's a website, this is the layout that you need to use. So this is why for the grade 10s and 11s, when I look at this pet, yeah, I can see this person had um, two, well, it was a website and this is a magazine, but they're not using the correct structure, <laughs> but they've got the name of the website, web page, the URL, they couldn't find the author or the date created. Um, but this was the date that they accessed it. Okay. And you can see also what's important is that you need to have a summary of the source information. In other words, what was on that web page? what was in those pages that you had a look at in that magazine or in that textbook or in that book the grade 12 you can see it's exactly the same it falls under again the same table but under the bibliographical information section who's the author what's the name of the website the date created the date accessed and the url okay so that's important let's go and have a look at our pet document Okay, so that's what it's telling us to identify the sources. And there they say, now add all this information in the appropriate columns in the questions and sources table you have created. Modify the table as needed. In other words, if you are referencing a book, it's going to be slightly different because that's the info that they want. Okay, so I'm going to go through this again. Identify the source. We've done that previously. Um, they told us what we must do. Provide bibliographical information for the sources you use. Um, at least two websites and one other source as follows. So there they show us. And there they're showing us um, how they've added that into the actual um, table that we've got there. So you can see this section is slightly different to this one. Why? Because this is referencing a website and this is referencing a book. So this is why they say you must modify the table as, as you need to do. Okay. So after that, once you've done that, and we look at our table, we then need to look at the quality of information found. I just want to go through back to the grade 11. Um, guys, remember for grade 10s and 11s, 
this is what you're going to do you're going to have another three tables okay and those three tables again you're going to be referencing your website and your other source um, and then also having a summary as well i just want to check through okay no nothing there right and then that's it Let's see what else i have to say once you have identified your sources, you need to assess the potential quality of the sources of information in order to gather quality information. For each of the three minimum sources you identified, at least two different websites plus one other source, you need to briefly evaluate the quality of the information using the following category. Now, this is interesting because let me go back here. What they are actually saying to us is the following. You're going to have 10 questions. You've inserted the levels. You've popped it into three different categories. You've got your types of sources. But under the bibliographical information, you need only fill in three sections. In other words, you are only looking at getting the bibliographical information of two websites and one other source. So only three of these sections need to be filled in. Two is going to be for websites. And the third one is going to be for something different, whether it's a magazine, book, whatever you had in here. Okay? You don't have to fill in the other stuff. Only those three. Here we are confirming it. Where they're saying, when we go to our next section, for each of the three minimum sources you identified, you need to evaluate the quality of that info. So, yeah, and in the grade 10, 11 section, this will again be um, a separate table or three separate tables. Quality of information found and the summary of the information found. Now, if you did your tables this way for the grade 10s and 11s, then it's fine. You've already got your summary. You can see some of these people added. Um, sometimes what they do is they actually add see now this section into the table so what they actually do is to take this entire section over here and turn that into three tables so now we've got our three tables for you know covering this section over here and our other three tables covering the rest so let's go and see what this is all about here they tell us the criteria the authority what does that mean we're talking here about the validity or credentials of the publisher or author of that book or of that website. So you will say, yes, um, the authority is valid. The credentials of the website um, is valid or are valid. Then the currency, the date on which the material was published. So you'll say, well, in terms of currency, the website is up to date and the website is current with its material. Or what might not be okay the accuracy the correspondence of the information with other sources in other words is the information that you find on the website accurate does it link to other sources as well objectivity some websites might be very biased in other words um they they don't want to hear any other opinion except their own right and they believe what they are saying is 100 percent correct um you need to Indicate if there's bias, if there's any prejudice, if there's a skewing of information as well. Remember, you are to be objective because you are researching. And then the coverage. How extensively the material covers the topic. So if it only, if it only covers a portion of the topic, then you'll say coverage. This website only covers a particular portion of the topic. You'll say what portion it is. Okay, so that is how we end up doing this quality of information found section All right and there you can see there's an example remember they said we're using appendix d for grade 12s we've got our number our category our source we had our questions here yeah we've got our bibliographical information and we've got our quality of information found as well so here's an example people of what it should look like please follow the examples there they tell us you can split the main table and create a separate table for the quality of information if you find it easier. It doesn't matter how you do it, as long as it gets done. Okay, now, here you can see they take us all the way through to 
the summary of information found um, and it obviously just summarizing what you found on the website so that then rounds up our tables and we can see they just give us some more info on that and so when we look at the handing for phase one because this would then complete phase one you're going to have a cover page you're going to have the headings we have a task definition and focus question under appropriate headings we have an appendix with a screenshot of our folder structure we have an appendix with the completed questions and sources table which we just went through in this video and the previous one that had a minimum of 10 questions sources for each question appropriate bibliographical data for each question an assessment of the quality of the sources for each of the questions and a summary for each of those questions either added in the table or separate files or in a hyperlink and then an appendix with a declaration of authenticity so that's they they actually gave that to us if you look through your pet document you should see i think it's appendix c yes this you would need to print out fill in um, and then sign as well and just scan it in and add it as part of the documents as you can see for your phase one handing just get there again for our phase one handing that is required so please, before you hand in your phase one, I know some of you are busy with this at the moment, just make sure you tick off all of these boxes, right? Because when I go to, let's go through to where I'm going to market or how I'm going to market, you can see focus question, our rubric, we've got our questions, we've done that, technical aspects, the bibliographical information. If I have all of this, it's four marks. If I've got my evaluation, that's another four marks. If I've got my summary, I get another four marks, right? And then for the fact right at the end that I've got a single document, that's my report. I've got my headings. I've got an appendix with a screenshot and I've got evidence of sources. In other words, the completed table, I get another four marks. And that's what gives me my 32 marks for phase one. Grade 12 that is how you tackle phase one that is how you knock it out of the ballpark um, and for the grade 10s and 11s it's going to be the same for you um, you'll just be breaking up those tables and obviously your topic is going to be slightly different but this is how we handle those tables and finish off phase one